All right, good morning, everybody. This is Dave Vellante of uh, Wikibon.org. We're here at Wikibon headquarters, worldwide headquarters in Marlboro, Mass. With here, we're here with Marco Pacelli. Marco, welcome to the Cube. Thank you. Marco's with ClickFox, everybody. And if you don't know ClickFox, a very hot company, uh, software vendor. Uh, we first met down in uh, New York City, right? You, yep. you guys were, were you were ringing the bell with uh, Greenplum. That ringing day, the right? bell right there in New and, York. Uh, and we, we learned a little bit about, about ClickFox. Now, big data, as our listeners know, is, uh, is a theme that we've really been going after here. We were at Hadoop World, and uh, that's where we met. We, we, you weren't at Hadoop World, we were, and then we met you know, somewhere downtown. But the big data trend is just exploding. We see with Cyber Monday, everybody's talking about you know, what the web traffic has been doing and comparing, you know, growth to last year. And that's, you know, all about big data. So, uh, and ClickFox is right at the heart of it, right? So why don't you tell us a little bit about, about ClickFox and your story? Sure. Um, we've got an amazing solution. Uh, big data is the name of the game now. There's uh, more and more data generated every day. It's with the social networks, with uh, all the customer interactions that are going on. Just the volume of data generated on a daily basis is huge. Um, all these companies store this data, and they store it in different silos of information towers, and they access the data for localized retrieval of value. What we've done, done is a little bit different. We've taken an approach that says there is value across this data that can be linked together to show the linkage of one data element to the next. And we have a patented technology that's able to take all of this data in, uh, unstructured or structured, and link it all together for a single view of what a customer experiences and how those experiences affect the business positively and negatively. The important thing is, is every enterprise out there looks at the data from their own aspect of what does it mean to them as a company. No one's ever taken an approach of putting themselves inside the customer's feet, inside the customer's shoes, and look at what is my actual customer's experience. When they walk in my store, what do they feel? What do they, what do they experience? And from that moment on, down the path that they interface with us as a company, what are the experiences they have? And at what point in time does that experience become a bad experience and become a bad customer set and become perhaps a churn where I lose the client? And that's where really where we're focused. All that value is in that data. So it's that end date. My colleague, by the way, I should have mentioned David Floyer is on the phone. Hello, David. Good morning from California. So uh, when Floyer and I first heard about you guys, the way he described it, uh, and David, maybe chime in here, you really unique because you do the end-to-end -end customer experience. Is Correct. that right? Correct. And David, you had said you hadn't seen anything like that. Is that Am I, am I putting words in your mouth? Or? No, not at all. Uh, the, the degree to which the you could combine the data and the speed at which you could develop the uh, the, the applications to, to look at this and make sense of it uh, is just uh, revolutionary. Um, it, it's, uh, it, it, it's To me, it's a game changer. So uh, let's talk a little bit more about ClickFox. So you just closed another round with Morgan Stanley, right? We sure did. Little uh, little bank in New York. And uh, so this is, it was a C round, correct? It was the C round. And you were talking off camera, you've raised, uh, what, 39 million? Is that 39 right? million total. All right, and are you done raising money? Or? We're done. All right, so, we're done. so talk a little bit about um, sort of the company and, and where you're at and you know where you're headed. So the money was not raised because we needed it. Um, we're profitable. Nice time to raise money. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? Um, we're actually profitable. We're doing very well. We've grown at the rates we've wanted to grow in the past six years. Uh, we made a decision this year to scale. Uh, we believe we're sitting on something that has a tremendous value. And as it, in our customer base, we notice year per year we're moving up the food chain more and more every year in these customers and demonstrating the return on investment is greater than just one division of a, of a customer. So the money was raised for us to really invest into three areas. One is to build a, a global sales organization that actually focuses on a customer issue and hire people that are in, uh, can actually understand solution selling. Second is to create a viral marketing machine around the concepts of experience analytics, behavior analytics, customer experience analytics, and really help the industry and market understand the value around these kind of analytics. And the third is um, I plan on probably doubling my research and development organization. There are a lot of really cool things we want to do in the next 12 to 24 months around using artificial intelligence and neural networks to do automated type analytics and predictive analytics. 
And we do have a lot of patents already and many more in filing, so we believe we can probably triple the volume of patents that we have been doing over the next couple of years around some of the concepts. So uh, what's, what's your headcount today? Headcount's around 120 people. 120, all right. So yeah. you've already got a pretty pretty good critical mass. And, yep. and you know, where, do you, where do you see that uh, the, a year from now? I think uh, by the end of a 211, it'll probably be around 190. Okay. This guy's a hiring, folks. So what, We're are, you hiring. Looking, what are you looking We're for? Hiring. What are you, what? Good salespeople. Yeah, okay. Good salespeople and, and innovative, young, talented minds. All right, good, good. So um, can you tell us uh, some of your customers? Yeah, uh, we have um, all the wireless providers in North America. So the Sprint, uh, Verizon, AT&T, uh, T-Mobile, Rogers, uh, Boost, Virgin Mobile, all clients. Uh, we have Chase, B of A is clients. Yeah, financial a, services must love this yep, stuff, right? And we have uh, a handful of electric and power companies, you know, Duke, Florida Power, Sempra, Atmos, and they're becoming even more and more uh, um, accepting more and more this concept of experience analytics in order to give better service to their customers. So um, a lot of clients, a lot of different verticals. Uh, it is expanding, and it's really cross-channel. What I want to make sure you understand is I can take any kind of data. So even in the power electric field, I can take every, everything from a meter, reader, data, all the way down to an agent interaction and tie it to a phone call. You know, in the cable business, we can take what's done on a cable box every day by a client all the way down every path that the customer might touch and tie it all together to determine is there something the customers are trying to do on that cable box that causes them to go to a website, that causes them to make a phone call, that causes them to talk to an agent and repeat and repeat and repeat and never get their answer or get their answer, but could have gotten it a lot quicker. So so you're actually putting forth the promise that uh, our cable service is going to get better? Yeah, I wish I, could. <laughs> I just wish I had that kind so of David, So David, uh, you, you've uh, talked about uh, the analytics business. I want to talk about what's changed. So, so Floyer, talk a little bit about, um, you, you call it, you know, rear view mirroring, right? And how the business has been just struggling to get to sort of real time or near real time. Can you characterize that a little bit? And then I want to Marco, to talk about what's changed in, in your business and where you guys are at and where we see it going. Sure. Um, I was talking to uh, Rob Strickland yesterday. He's one uh, was, was one of your customers at T-Mobile. And, and he was talking about uh, two things which were really important to him. First of all, it's just the speed at which, you, at which he could develop these sort of uh, analytic uh, views of the world, of, of his world. And uh, with his previous experience with uh, some of the other, you know, larger methods of doing it, he uh, it took him about uh, six months to to get things off the ground. But with um, with the new methods of doing it, he could do that within a quarter. And so he characterized it as uh, rear view mirror for for one year versus rear view mirror for one quarter, getting to uh, closer to being able to. Uh, affect things within the quarter, look at trends, look at uh, what is going on, and actually make decisions and, and change things within a quarter. So so that doesn't sound that dramatic. I mean, it's dramatic in the sense that it's cut it in half or maybe even more than half, but are we at the point now where we can get to, to real time or near real time, or is that sort of a decade off, Marco? Um, it depends how you want to define real time. So there is the real time processing of data to analyze it real time, meaning get the data real time, analyze it real time. Um, I believe that we are very close to achieving that in the industry whereby you can ingest the data at, at the time it happens and analyze it. The problem is making the decision on what to do with it real time um, because you want to get to a point eventually where you can change the experience the customer just had the next time they have it in order to make it better. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you gotta look at a window is and predict when will that client have that similar experience again? Will it be in 24 hours or will it be within day? Can, you, can we ever get to a point where we can change the behavior of a customer real time? That will be very difficult because there are so many systems out there that have been built that you have to touch 
everything from a retail experience to a web experience to a self-service IDR experience to a routing experience to an agent to an email to an SMS to a chat. There are some of those experiences that I believe we can affect real time so that, for instance, let's say you did walk in a store and you upgraded your phone and you walked out of that store and the first thing you did was make a phone call because you couldn't figure out how to set up your voicemail. Um, now, I have a couple things I can do. If I analyze that experience real time and I was able to compare it to maybe a million other experiences that have happened with similar clients, with similar phones, and similar type of behavior patterns of customers, maybe the same type of age group, the same type of users, the same region, and I could come up with a real-time answer that says, I'm predicting that this customer, when they walk out of that store, will make a phone call about their mailbox. Mm -hmm. I could, in a real-time fashion, create a message, SMS, a email, or some type of communication back to that client at the time they walk out the store, explaining to them something that I know they're going to have to understand and do that other clients similar did even yesterday. Right. Right? That's a kind of real-time interaction I can get. I'm being proactive, and mm -hmm. I'm deflecting. I'm deflecting a bad experience. I'm deflecting a bad customer set from happening. Because yeah, you're because you're anticipating they were coming. Correct. I'm picturing myself walking into an Apple store, right. going through a process of you know buying a new device, and right. then, you know it's always real comfortable. And then you walk out and say, okay, how do I do that? Exactly. And then no. you just maybe send me a little message. There you go. Here I, you go. I, I knew you were going to do it, right? Yeah. Or or better yet, now with the social networks. What I could do eventually is I could put you in touch as soon as you walk out of that store with clients that are very similar to you and link you together as a social network so that you can tag them and say, hey, by the way, I understand you just have bought the same phone. How do you do this? You're not even calling me or asking me as a service provider for the answer. You're asking a social network that has done the same thing as you. All right, so you can, you can actually bring in the, that type of social, you know, gestural, interactive data I, into your I can, system? I can feed, yeah. feed yeah. the information so that the right social network links are created for the right purpose for the enterprises, for the wireless company. It says there are, you know, a thousand customers like you that bought the exact same phone, have similar type of experiences and similar type of segmentation information. Why not link you together? So when you walk out that phone, you already got a list that says, by the way, if you want to talk to anyone that has the same phone as you and ask them how to do things, it's right there. All right, so you're talking about uh, recognizing patterns of, let's say, a mob of people who are doing similar behavior. Uh, uh, is your industry actually getting, you know, there's no privacy in the Internet right. anymore, right? right? Is the industry actually getting down to, you know, targeting specific individuals, maybe IP addresses, putting aggregating information about that individual, or is that sort of taboo, or I, is that I, just gray I, area I right see now? it happen in the next yeah. three years, absolutely. Yeah, so, I mean, that's that's pretty powerful yeah. from a lot of standpoints. I mean, there's, there's a yin and a yang there, right? There's the opportunity for advertisers, Correct. for example, and then there's the whole issue of privacy and the, the do not also, track me. And There's also the opportunity of, of deflection, of creating the right atmosphere for the provider to create the right experiences for the clients which says um, I'm trying to get you your answers in a way that so I don't waste your time right right and um, the one thing we all hate is we, we hate getting on the phone and trying over and over and over again to get an answer to a question it's for, I don't have 20 minutes oh, in the day, do you? You're solving a good problem, right? Because right? everybody hates that, right? right? Whether it's, you're calling a bank or a cable company or any any retailer. Correct. You know, and, I mean, you'd rather get your answer by, by asking someone via text message or just having the answer sent to you, right? Yeah, so... So this privacy thing, thing is interesting to me because, you, you know, again, on the one hand, people are concerned about their privacy. On the other hand, it sounds like you're offering some benefit to the consumer. Correct. You know, so there's got to be ways for the industry to provide sort of an opt-in model. Say, right. okay, I'll, I'll allow you to, to track my behavior as long as there's something at the other end that I get benefit Correct. with. And I, Correct. It seems like over the next few years that has to come together. And, you know, normally software companies aren't in the middle of that, but you are. Yeah. Yeah. So, um all right, that's cool. So, and, and the other thing is, when we were talking on the phone, uh, David, you and I, you took us through an example of one of your customers that actually, they didn't know what they didn't know mm -hmm. in the customer experience. Can you take us through that? You know which one I'm talking about? Sure. Yeah, take us through that, because I thought it was fascinating for so us. So we, um, we have quite a few clients that um, were doing cross-channel analytics, uh, everything from retail down to agent. Um, and when we start the projects, we, we typically ask a lot of questions around, 
what do you believe your self-service rates are? What do you believe your customer sat reasons are for having low CSAT or high CSAT? And you know, even questions around what do you believe is a reason for churn? And most of the time, actually all the times, um, you know, they come out with self-service rates that are in the double digits. You know, 30% of our clients self-serve, 45% of our clients self-serve. And they also give us answers such as churn is attributed to the fact our competition has better pricing or our competition releases fancier and cooler products. And CSAT, they always end up telling us it's because the customers don't get the service and the and the products that they want at the time they want. When we start implementing this technology and we uncover things, we we quickly can show them that a lot of those thought things they thought were incorrect. So for instance, we had a client that believed they were doing about 38% self-serve. That means customers would go into their voice response unit self-serve at a rate of 38%, the rest would push zero and go to an agent right. or go to the website and self-serve. But when we ran the analytics, the reality was about 9% were self-serve. 9%? 9%. Okay. And they thought it was 38%. They were thought of 38%. Right. And if you look at the cost of an agent interaction, it's about $2 to $5 a call. When it becomes a technical call, it goes up to 15 to 25. Mm -hmm. So if you look at it, you know, clients that are doing 50 million interactions a month, yeah. right? At those kind of numbers, it's a, a serious, big number. A serious cabbage, right? Um, and the same thing that you know, you look at customer sat. You know, why are you frustrated with your service provider? I mean, you're only frustrated if you have to call them and you don't get an answer, right? I mean, yeah. you buy a phone, you pretty much use it, and you're happy with it, and you know, you'll buy a new one in six months when they have a new product. But if you never call and never have to ask a question, you're pretty happy with everything, as long as the bill's not going to go over what it should and your phone does what it says. Um, but as soon as you make a phone call and ask for help or ask for a question about a bill, you start getting frustrated, right? So when you look at customer sat and you plug it into a product like this and you're able to go backwards upstream and say, where did this customer start with our relationship and what have their experiences been since? And tie that to which experiences have caused this customer to get frustrated with us, you find the needle in the haystack. Mm -hmm. Same concept. Right, right. Now, we met you guys through the good folks at Green Plum. Yes. It's sort of, it was serendipitous. But so, what do you guys do with Green Plum? What's the relationship there? Green Plum um, is a really cool technology. We're, we're really happy to have them uh, not only as a partner, but also be a client of theirs. Uh, prior to Green Plum, you know, this type of analytics would take hours and days to run mm -hmm. uh, because of the efficiencies of the databases. So, it, you know, if we ran Oracle and, and to load, you know, a typical client of ours that does, you know, 11 million interactions a day across multiple touches into our system would take a day to load, so you'd always be a day behind. Greenplum has brought to the industry a technology that allows data to be loaded and retrieved so quickly uh, and get to the data you need to so quickly that, you know, that, those kind of loads today, 11 million interactions a day, can be done within an hour. And the analytics behind it can be done almost real time. So uh, we love it. Uh, it's a great technology, um, and we look uh, in the future and doing much more with them. Yeah, so they, and they, okay. go ahead, David. Again, going back to uh, talking to Rob, uh, he was saying that uh, the, the difference between doing it with uh, Greenplum um, and uh, on an appliance was uh, uh, four to five times. He said uh, if he'd done it with uh, Teradata, it would have been about 18 million, but with uh, Greenplum, uh, about three to four million to uh, to get to the same point. And You're talking dollars? It was just a, you, you, no, no, dollars, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very so, true, very true. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, look at the volumes of data out there. And, and what we're analyzing um, is a type of data that no one ever thought had, vo had value interactions mm -hmm. okay I mean most of the data that's stored in these big data warehouses and the EMC's and Teradata's and Oracle's and IBM's of the world's has been transactional data you bought a phone uh, you paid a bill uh, you activated an account that kind of data yep. no one's ever thought of there would be value around interactions means you walked into a store and you did something okay there's a transaction and an interaction now you bring those two worlds together and I have the entire picture of a client. 
Yeah, so you take that, uh, that transaction, tie it to the interaction, tie it to a client, and then look at that customer experience end to end, and from right. that extract valuable information right. on how to make that experience Correct. better. Correct. And now, now we were talking about the Hadoop movement before. Yeah. I think we did an intro to Mike yep. Olson. Yep. I hope you get a chance to meet him. Fabulous, uh, it, this is Cloudera, who is sort of the, the red hat, if you will, of the Hadoop sure. movement. And uh, I think, and now Greenplum has a relationship with, with Cloudera, mm -hmm. and it's sort of unclear where they're going. I mean, I think they, they're both in the big data business, you're in the big data business, and, and Hadoop is all about that massive amounts of unstructured data on the web, sort of right. very decentralized, and so now you can start bringing in all kinds of other information from social networks yes. and user gestural data, cell phone data. Yes. You know, Everything. and that, that's just, you know, uh, 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 tremendous opportunities mm -hmm. there. So, so we're, that's, that's something that we've been following at Wikibon, our friends at Silicon Angle, and we're all over that. We're watching ClickFox, Marco Pacelli, hot company. Thank you. Um, fabulous having you here inside the Cube. Thanks for coming by. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Great to have you. Good to have you. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you, David. Bye-bye.